I met Aishwarya for the first time in Lechri Yash Chopra ji's uh, office where he was contemplating on casting her for Dar. When I saw her, Yash ji and I discussed and we said she is beautiful. But he said, you know, maybe it won't work out because she is going for the Miss World pageant. The first year it was perceived very well. The next year it was not perceived very yeah. well. Aishwarya was very, uh, she was not well. Hmm. She had a problem, she had fractured her foot. And uh, there were some 47 outfits that went with her. I really don't know what happened there. Anybody is going to be upset. My first meeting with Sarojji was for for uh, the song in Teza Begdoti. I was a very, very junior designer then. So I have to ask you about uh, Ashwarya's uh, wedding outfit. So I was doing this feature and I got to know it was worth rupees 75 oh lakhs God. at that time. <laughs> really? Like, yeah. I mean, of course. You fell for this, Afwa. Uh, Hi, this is Neeta Lola and you're watching Bollywood Hangama. If today people can voice out their aspiration of becoming a fashion designer, we must thank her because she brought in credibility and respect to the profession. She started with no ambition, but today she has been ruling the world of fashion for almost four decades now. Welcoming Neeta Lola. Welcome thank to you. Bollywood Hangama. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have to ask you that, you know, as I mentioned in my intro, you did not start um, this career with any ambition. You did not have any ambition before becoming a designer. Could you take me to a moment where you felt like, yes, I love this and I cannot live without doing fashion? I can take you to four decades of saying, yes, I love this and I yeah. could not be anything else but a fashion designer. Um, when I started my career, it was... Uh, predominantly about just having fun, just uh, going with the flow. But I think that going with the flow became my mantra for every work that I did. It was not about pre-planning that I wanted to have this milestone by this year, that milestone by that year. It was only about enjoying and being in the moment of the work. And I guess somewhere that has kind of uh, brought me to where I am, to a phase where every day I wake up saying, okay, today what's new? Let's have some fun. That's amazing. So you have been working in Bollywood for so, so long, right? And fashion has changed over the years. And you also play a major part because uh, I don't know if you saw this, but there there's a reel that's going viral on Instagram where they're copying jeans outfits of Aishwarya. And I think that was a game changer because those were the clothes that were that we can still wear even in today's time. Could you tell us about the journey of your association with Aishwarya and jeans particularly? So I met Aishwarya for the first time in Lechri Yash Chopra ji's uh, office where he was contemplating on casting her for Dar. I don't think very many people know this. So we did a look test of sorts and he called me, he said, let's do a look test with her. And uh, when I saw her, Yash ji and I discussed and we said, she is beautiful. But he said, you know, maybe it won't work out because she is going for the Miss World pageant. And uh, she went away and uh, Dar happened and then she came back and uh, Post that, I think because of the kind of camaraderie we had during the um, look test, she called me, she was doing uh, Mani Ratnam Ji's film and she said, I'm doing this film called Jeans and I'd like you to, you know, design the whole film for me. And I did and uh, working with Shankar was an absolute delight. But uh, uh, here's how it went, you know, I used to meet Shankar every week, Monday meet him to understand the looks and everything and that was a day and age where it was not about getting the entire script you know you got one scene at a time one portion of a song at a time and um, then within those 10 days I would travel out of the country pick up fabrics come back and then start stitching it because that was also the time when brands were not available yeah. in the country. So, and you needed to give something that was larger than life and which Shankar, he wanted 
something that you've never seen before. And uh, for me, that's what excites me about cinema, that larger than life aspect and trying to get um, something that is visually a treat to watch. And that process was something else. I mean, I'll never forget it. And uh, yeah, uh, working on different techniques, couture techniques on the garments. Yeah. Um, I can only attribute this to the fact that I have studied fashion and it was possible. Mm. So mm. Um, it was a, a sort of sourcing, yeah. technicalities, um, visualizing everything involved and put into one and that's that's how the magic of dream happened uh, genes happened that's amazing what was your first impression of Ashwarya as a person when you met her of course she's beautiful but when you met her do you remember the first conversation what did you guys talk about because you have been friends with her for so long now you know the minute you meet Ashwarya you are like you're focused <laughs> And uh, she came across, uh, apart from looking absolutely extraordinary, she was wearing a white uh, churidar kurta and absolutely extraordinary. She came across very, very soft spoken, very um, genuine and uh, uh, very humble. And uh, you know, we, we hit it off immediately. It, w it was uh, just gorgeous the way. A lot of people have this question, once the outfits are worn in the movies, where do they go? Oh, there are some fabulous production houses like AGPPL or uh, Guna Shekhar sir's uh, production team, Guna Teamworks, who have these huge um, storehouses where they keep the clothes and it's a visual treat to watch them. You know, the way they keep their clothes, they they look after them. They have uh, people who come and clean up the whole place yeah. once a month. And uh, it's lovely to see how people kind of look after it and keep it in their archives. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, yeah, some production houses kind of reuse it. There is a sustainable aspect to clothing in films because there is a reusability yeah. aspect in your other forthcoming films where you can use it for, uh, you know, the um, secondary or the tertiary cast. And uh, you can change it a little bit around, style it, and use it differently. Oh, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, I have to ask you, because you're talking about fashion, what do you think about diets of yak? I think they are, uh, they have the guts to speak. Yeah. I mean, good, bad, ugly, there is somebody who is policing. And uh, one has to go with the flow, one has to take it I mean, you know, uh, whether you're getting uh, good comments or bad com comments, yeah. you just take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're doing what they do best and right. I think we we have to respect that. You know, uh, talking about diet sabya, I clearly remember one day, uh, the page posted about uh, Madhuri Dikshit's look in Akhya Me Lau Kabhi Akhya Chirao and they, they just posted uh, like international brands like uh, the original outfit and that was a copy. And the designer very, very honestly accepted that I was asked to copy by the producers, by the maker. So I had to do it. It was not really my choice. Did it ever happen to you when people came to you with like photos of international designers and make something like this or, or, or something of that sort? So, uh, you know, in all honesty, um, inspirations are always there. Yeah. Uh, when I started my career, we used to get two magazines. Hmm. In six months, we used to get only two magazines. And uh, that was the inspiration. But however, to get inspired, we used to fall back on books from the library. Right. You know, look at what was being done in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, mm. 60s, and take our inspirations from there and work on it. Uh, with the advent of social media, digital mediums, everything is available yeah. at reach. So much so that even if a director wants to explain to you that, you know, this is mm -hmm. something that I want my actor to look like, they straight away bring the image and say that this is it. Mm. You know, now it's up to you whether um, you can translate that for the director and the actor into something that has the inspiration but has something that will look good for the character mm. per se the director's uh, point of view or for the actor with their structure and how well can you kind of 
convince them that you know I can tweak this around to look like this. So that's an inspiration to an aspiration that a director or, or an actor has. But there are some directors who will say I want exact. Mm -hmm. Again, it's up to you whether you want to copy it outright, which a lot of them insist on doing at times, or whether you say that, you know what, this is not something I will do. I will kind of give you a tweak of this in another way. Mm. So um, getting inspired from what is at close reach happens. Yeah. So. Um, a grey area is whether you are actually copying because you want to copy or because there is a particular look that demands that. Right. So every, I mean there is no black or white in this, there is a grey path that we are threading and uh, I would just keep, the, keep it open to that. Right. You are also part of the voting body of the Oscars, yes. right? Um, how did that happen? And of course the two films that were mentioned like clearly are Devdas and Jodhakbar. So tell me about that experience. You know, I really don't know how that happened. But uh, uh, Eduardo Costero, uh, who, is, uh, uh, a, a, who is a very integral part of the Academy mm -hmm. uh, Costume Designers Board Committee, uh, he mentioned to me once that, you know, after looking at your body of work and um, I had, I happened to have met him years back, which I had seemed to forgo have forgotten. And uh, he uh, was like, I remembered your work, I followed your work and I really felt that you should be part of this. So this is how I got into the academy and I'm very grateful and thankful to him for this. But um, I guess it was just a following of the work and my work on IMDb uh, yeah. being there. Right. Um, they've noticed films like Devdas and Joda and yeah. yeah. Um, I was also going through the archives of the 90s interviews and shoots and um, one thing was mentioned that Saroj Khanji was very particular about the outfits, right, you know, when the actress was dancing. So did you have any kind of encounter with her or conversations with her where she was particular about that? In fact, I remember Kajol saying in an interview that uh, she was on a shoot and she said, Kaise ka pade isko? like, you know, change karo because he used to work so much that she became pretty frank about it. So. You tell me, did you have any kind of encounter with her? So, I, my first uh, uh, meeting with Sarojji was for for uh, the song in Teza Abeg Do Teen. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, I was a very, very junior designer then. I just started working with yeah. uh, uh, on clothes and stuff. And she wanted me to do the background, the dancers and everybody. And I did it. And she was very particular about what uh, mm. she wanted and post that suddenly we met on the set and I was designing clothes for Sri Devi and um, obviously the carriage, the kind of uh, attitude Sri Devi had for her clothes and everything. You, you can't but just fall in love with the way she walks into the, uh, the set and the set lights up. So, um, I guess we had a great camaraderie there and then uh, somewhere she had a trust factor that when this girl will make the clothes, there problem nahi hoga. So, I've never faced a problem with my clothes with her yeah. per se. Hmm. And um, I very strongly feel that uh, when an actor is comfortable in what they wear, yeah and they go on stage and they can perform the dance and everything very well, then there's no problem. But if the actor walks on stage and is kind of adjusting mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. moving, then I think not only Saroji, but anybody will catch it and say, okay, what's the problem here? Right, right. Um, you know, when we talk about actresses, especially when we talk about Ashwari, Ashri, Devi, Madhuri and everyone, like. Um, they are known to be very private as people. They have this very proper public persona, right? So uh, they reveal whatever they want to reveal, right? But when you work so closely with them, I'm sure that you know their human side. And I can completely understand that why they don't want to uh, say a lot to the media. I completely understand. But if you had to describe their personality as a friend, how are they as people when we talk about the late Sri Devi or Juhi Shavla or Aishwarya? Tell us something about that. 
maybe it's something that very, we did not know uh, about them yeah very humble very um, warm very very warm and uh, they tr treated you like family right so i guess uh, that's where the bonding happens yeah. you know it's 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 not camaraderie it's not just friendship it's mm. it's a warmth of you being treated like a family member that uh, yeah which was common in all of them in fact a lot of the actors i've worked with i can um, very modestly say i've worked with almost 95 to 98 actors in the industry mm. male and female but they treat you like family and you know they the, the warmth that you receive from them is exceptional this brings me to the question like you know when a star is going through something like uh, we get to know about it right but uh, as a designer has any star been with you in your tough times where you felt like okay this 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 person actually was with me when i needed all of him them. yeah all of them that's amazing i mean i've been blessed and lucky to have been working with actors who been there right right so i have to ask you about uh, ashwarya's uh, wedding outfit so i was doing this feature and i got to know it was worth rupees 75 oh lakh God. at that time <laughs> really like, yeah i mean of course you fell for this afwa uh, oh this is an afwa <laughs> then could you tell what did it cost if somebody wants to buy like you know because they are still inspired by that outfit so you do the math i mean a kanjivaram sari how much would it cost <laughs> you tell me <laughs> no no i mean do a math how much will a kanjivaram sari cost it can't cost like a crore or a 75 lakhs can it ah and uh, a basic blouse with a well cut well fitted embroidered zardozi blouse right right and jewelry yeah. i mean are you counting the whole thing with the jewelry hmm i don't know where hmm. the math is <laughs> but yeah what what was the cost of just the outfit i don't remember right now <laughs> i really don't remember okay okay all right no problem so uh, you know because she is the most beautiful woman on this planet and she has dressed up as a bride in her films and she has looked the best now i guess it must be a task to decide what would she wear on her wedding day because she's already looked so beautiful in so many films and this is like her d day do you remember the conversation or the briefing that she gave you for her wedding outfit you know strangely when we were talking about her wedding outfit she was dressed in her in the jodha wedding outfit ah uh -huh. and i've dressed her in i don't know how many films as a bride be it devdas be it hamdil be it jodha be it a lot of other films right i can't even remember the names right now hmm. and um i remember saying i'm not dressing like this for my wedding I want to dress in a kanjivaram so you figure what has to be done for that speak to mom and you guys you know do your recce where you want to get it woven what you want to do yeah. and that's how uh, because it was her wedding and she's a south indian she's a tulu um she wanted that culture to and you know her uh, cultural upbringing her Uh, cultural values and everything to exude in her uh, the way she looked in her complete look and a style statement and that's exactly what we did i mean uh, her mom auntie and i we got the sari specially woven yeah. for her and the blouse was also that very basic 5 uh, inches blouse like a lot of south indians wear sleeve blouse um the sleeves would be 5 inches i mean the and uh, mm. the embroidery done in to match the sari right. and jewelry of course we went in for uh, a little more ornate and that's how it happened right what do you think about urfi javed's uh, fashion i think she is very sweet i think she has a mind of her own i think she has her own style statement and hats off to the girl for bringing it out in the way she wants to and and she brings out her her communication of the way she is very clearly hmm. and very happily and with a lot of pride and that's very important for anyone 
to be able to carry off your style statement with pride. Talking about Can, uh, you dressed Aishwarya for her first outing there and it was very, again what was the briefing about because this is one international mega event and uh, because it was not done before, like how did you decide that it would be a sari, it could have been a gown as well? You know, today you speak about what is the thought process, what was the inspiration, right. how did Can's happen and what are you going to do, what is the storyboarding? Those days there was nothing like this. Ah. I mean, Sanjay just told us that the movie is going for the Cannes Film Festival and uh, Aishwarya needs to dress Indian. That's about it. Okay. That's about it. The color I decided, the look I decided, mm. um, her evening attire which was a pant with a Swarovski crystal crop uh, kurti with a dupatta I decided. So. It was like just another film festival she was going right. for an appearance. Hmm. And because of the way that was accepted, suddenly everybody stood up and took note of the Cannes Film Festival. And today it is where it is. Absolutely. Uh, but the thing is that, you know, the next year, it like the first year it was perceived very well. The next year it was not perceived very yes. well, but she stood uh, by you and she trusted you because obviously she got married in your outfit, right? And that was, so uh, how did you deal, both deal with that situation? Because it was, uh, it was making big headlines. So it was, uh, um, I think it was uh, a kind of a comedy of errors there, I would say, because, uh, um, you know, when as a designer you send out clothes and that year Aishwarya was very, uh, she was not well. Hmm. She had a problem, she had fractured her foot and uh, there were some 47 outfits that went with her hmm. for the whole uh, um, festival and uh, day wear, afternoon wear, evening wear, red carpet wear. Um, Somewhere I guess what happened was possibly time, possibly because of different uh, um, collaborations, you know, jewellery had to be changed yeah. though, jewellery was also sent for that. Um, I really don't know what happened there. But were you, you know, upset but, after uh, that? Anybody is going to be upset with the kind of um, comments that a lot of fellow designers and um, media put mm. out without knowing what exactly. what exactly happened which even till day I don't know mm. and uh, I mean all I knew was that there were these front page and mm. double page features that were happening about how bad a designer I was or whatever mm. but anyways um, I guess her wearing my outfit and trusting me with so many more posts only spoke the truth about it right. because if you've really damaged somebody's career so bad, how would you be working even post that? Right. So um, I really don't know what happened there and I, I think it's in the past, you right. take it with a pinch of salt, right. you learn and today the learning is that all the stylists go with their designers to the Cannes Film Festival mm. to see that, you know, no more of this happens ever. Right. And I guess that's it. I have to talk about Sri Devi's iconic look when she walked the ramp for you um, like a decade ago in that silver outfit, right? And I think that was groundbreaking because uh, we were um, like we were accustomed to seeing either uh, like women in their 20s or if they had a chance they would choose like a very very veteran actor as a showstopper. Right, but uh, how did you um, think of uh, getting Sri Devi ji on ramp for that outfit? Because um, it was very different, and uh, it was uh, taken very well, and it was something that we had not seen her wearing something like that before. So tell me about that specific uh, fashion show of yours. So the thing is that uh, as a mainstream designer and a couturier, I do not believe in just having an actor walk the ramp for me for the glam value. Yeah. Um, it has to carry weight to the concept of my clothes. It has to have some relevance mm -hmm. where the synergy between the muse and the designer happens. For example, when I worked on uh, my uh, first collection for Lakme, which was 2007, which was based on female feticide. 
um, and to speak about you know how a girl child is is uh, a value add to the family. Um, I spoke to uh, to Sushmita because mm. Sushmita had adopted a girl child then, yeah. and it was it was something that resonated with my collection as well for me. So Sushmita walked the ramp for me. Subsequently, uh, later year, um, I was working on a, on a collection called uh, um, Immortal Love, and the the purest form of love and the most immortal love that you remember all your life is the love of your child. Mm. So I got Darshil Safari to walk for me that year because Tare Zamipe had released at yeah. that point in time and resonated with my collection. Absolutely. So that way I have kind of uh, worked with not only actors but women of substance, women in power, women who are the first, like the first woman pilot, the right. first woman advocate, you know, people like that. So for me, it is not about a glam quotient on ramp. And I think I would be amongst the first of the pioneers to have an actor walk the ramp, actually. My collection on Radha, Hema ji performed on stage. Right. Because she always does these shows on Radha Krishna. So when I was doing my 25 years in fashion, it would only deem fit that my, my most favorite muse, who has worked with me for the longest time, walked the ramp. And it was out of honor mm. to felicitate her that I asked her to walk the ramp, and she did. What do you miss about her? Everything. She has been my mentor. Mm. She has been my guide, my mentor. She has, I mean, today what I've learned is because of her. Uh, you have to talk about your latest collection and uh, I feel like I'm a kid sitting in a candy shop and I want to try them all but you take us through your collection. My collection is, uh, there are two types of collections, there is a bridge to luxury, there is a couture and bridal collection. Uh, bridge to luxury you will see a lot of uh, florals in my collections over here which is called Rindavan Symphony, there is Resham work which is Asmi, there is Bahar, which is again Resham work. These are all um, clothes that a bridesmaid or a, a bride going for a destination wedding for her mehndi would select. Then we have gowns uh, uh, which uh, are in the Kutio collection. My Kutio collection is all one of a kind. And we work with uh, um, different concepts because as a couturier, I believe that no two people are alike, no two sensibilities are alike. And predominantly, um, what we do is, for the bridal wear, we do bespoke clothing, where uh, everything is made to the requirement, custom made to mm -hmm. the requirement, the look and the style statement of the bride. And you will never find for the couture collection, the bridal couture collection, you will never find two outfits the same. Right. So, in my career of 38 years, where we've done custom-made clothes in couture brides, for couture brides, we have never had two outfits which look alike. Wow. So, I, I feel that is that is what true, true couture is all about. I feel that is what, um, you know, you can, as a designer, give a value add to your mm. client mm. for them to remember it for posterity and also be able to wear it later on with a great deal of joy and pride. Yeah, so when we, you know, uh, watch Elisa and uh, Zuhair Murad talking about their couture, right, they mentioned how many hours, yeah. it, like, you know, we just don't realize, we just see it like, yeah, this is pretty, whatever. So, like, how many, uh, like, how many hours do you have to spend on a single couture outfit of yours? 600 hours right here. 600 hours, oh my god. Yeah. pleating uh, and uh, um, gathering the ruffles yeah. and putting it together. Wow. It, it takes a lot of time, handwork, hmm. embroidery that goes onto it, the kind of quality of embroidery that you put onto it. It all takes up a lot of time. So how do you feel when these get copied and uh, are sold in markets like uh, Chandni Chowk? Simple rule, 
that I follow, imitation is the sincerest for form of flattery. Um, so either you learn to be different and move on, hmm. or you stay in the same rut and complain. But do you think it affects um, the business if something is out there copied? It definitely um, disrupts the business hmm. for a short span of time till the time you come up with a new collection. Right. right. And I think creativity is an ever evolving process. So um, it's not necessary that if I'm doing a Vrindavan symphony today in the kind of clothes I'm doing, I'll do the same in the next season. Hmm. So if this is um, kind of copied now, in my next season, it won't be the same. Right. And people who want quality, who want the finish, who want the cut and the fit are definitely going to come to you because a copy won't give you that. Right. right. So what is the problem? <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us and it was a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, this is Neeta Lula and you're watching Bollywood Hangama.